when webbing gets contaminated with all sorts of things, you might be wondering if it's still safe to use. Well, we did almost 50 brake tests to discover that most things don't matter. Find out on this episode of How Not to High Align what we tested and what actually made this stuff weaker. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to Slack Snap, where we did a while ago actually, over almost 50 brake tests with 15 different contaminants that Dwayne Burkhart uh, put together. He had two different polyester webbings and a nylon. That's what he had and he cut it into one meter sections and contaminated the middle of it. Not the part that goes in the web lock, so we could see if the webbing breaks in the back of the web lock like normal or if it breaks where the contamination was. So the nylon webbing is the basic tubular climb spec webbing that is all over the place. And it has an MBS of 20 and in our control sample, it broke at 20. 19 and 20 kilonewtons is what we get when we break this stuff normal. And we also tested Slack Pro. I don't have any Slack Pro, but this is polyester webbing and it's nice to have something in my hand while I talk. Slack Pro has an MBS of 33 kilonewtons. It is polyester. So we have 100% nylon and 100% polyester webbings that we tested. We also tested the Gibbon flow line, which is also very similar to the Slack Pro webbing. The flow line webbing has an MBS of 30 kilonewtons. So it's very, very similar to the other one. So we didn't break three of each of each contaminant because that would be mm, 150 break tests. No, we would do that if we found one that was breaking things lower and chase the rabbit trails. You can't just do three or five samples of each of absolutely every variable under the sun. That's not realistic, at least for us. That's why science is expensive. And that's why this YouTube channel is ran off of a very lean budget. <laughs> so I have a lot of numbers and I'm not gonna try to pretend to remember them all. Uh, the Gibbon flow line, Dwayne said, was seven years old and rigged permanently in his backyard for over a year. The Slack Pro was about five years old and had very light use. And then the green climb spec is approximately two years old with light use, which is probably why it broke at basically full strength. Now, the Gibbon flow line in our control sample, which seemed to be eh, kind of a waste of time because most of our samples broke behind the web lock. But anyways, we did a control sample. We're trying to pretend to do science here. So the Slack Pro broke at 26 kilonewtons and the flow line broke at 25. Remember their MBSs are like 33 and 30. So that's a pretty substantial loss, but you don't always get MBS when you use a web lock. The MBS is based on a big diverter in the factory instead of a smaller diverter that's in our web locks. But I diverge. Let's just find out if we get less than 26, 25, and 20 for our samples. So our first sample was Coke. Not, not that kind, Coca-Cola. And it basically had no effect. Granted the climb spec broke at 19 kilonewtons, but that's within the acceptable range of, of it breaking and it broke behind the web lock. Take that in consideration. The next thing was IPA beer. And that made our Slack Pro break at 30 kilonewtons, which is almost 20% higher than our control sample. So clearly beer will make your webbing stronger. So climb on lotion, some magic balm from Dr. Bronner's, some organic coconut sun sunscreen, and bug spray with no DEET. Basically, it's having no effect on any of these samples. Did you know that it's really boring to break things when it's predictable? So I must pause and be grateful to Lorenzo DiMuro and Nick McPherson. I believe that's who broke these samples because without help, I don't think I could do 50 boring samples in a row. So we have a bug spray with no DEET and DEET and it made no difference. But anyways, the extra virgin olive oil Oh, the puns I could use. I'll refrain for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, the extra virgin olive oil 
made one of our samples break a little bit lower, but that's not the interesting part. Did you know oil makes things slippery? Our Slack Pro and our given flow lines, they're slipping in the weblog. It would just pop and pop, 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 almost to the end of the line, some of them to the end of the line. We had to double wrap it, I believe, to get it to even break, which is insane. Um, so weblock slippage is a thing, that's why you tie your tails off, but I've never seen it happen in my brake test machine until we got it all greasy with the virgin olive oil. Kombucha had no difference. Coffee had no difference. Now the nylon did break at 18, but I still consider that within just the tolerance because it breaks in the web lock and not where the sample was soaked in the middle. Bleach, surprisingly, had no effect. Hydrogen peroxide had basically no effect. White gas. So Duane gave us some extra samples for us to try uh, to contaminate ourselves because he did mostly contaminations uh, at his place. And so we had some white gas that people use for fire, poi, and things like that. Had no effect. Goof off. Xylene. Like lacquer thinner family. No effect. Motor oil. Motor oil. Like you leave this stuff on the ground, right? You like don't leave ropes in parking lots, things like that. You don't want them hanging out around your leaking batteries, but new motor oil had no effect other than maybe making it slippery, but the oil was placed in the center of the webbing and not where the weblock was. However, very interesting. So if you look at the end of my leashes, it doesn't look like they are circumcised like so many people's. People cut them off and try to burn them, but the inside rope inside of this 11 16 tubular webbing, which is what gives us a stuffed leash, I believe it's a 9.9 .9 millimeter rope, if I'm not mistaken, could be wrong on that. I dip this in formic acid, and that's what keeps my leash and the outer sheath together. And it's very dangerous to get on your webbing because if you notice on the chart, it broke the nylon at nothing, basically one kilonewton or less. It doesn't take anything, it, it, it destroys nylon. However, fascinating that it had no effect on the polyester. It also has no effect on Dyneema because I've tried to dip the ends of my Dyneema things in formic acid. Science. So here is our chart that Joao Portales put together and he is editing this video, which is pretty hard to include all of these samples. And he's also helped me with slackline.com, which is our new website. And he helped me like redesign it all. So. Big shout out to Joao Portales. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Portuguese is pretty hard for me. 